Hello, and welcome to a brand new modding tutorial series. This is Mark Ora, and today I'll be showing you how to mod using Fabric. You'll need a basic understanding of Java to code Minecraft. In this series, we'll cover both Fabric modding and learning the basics of Java. These tutorials will build upon each other and get progressively more advanced. It progressively gets more difficult as it continues. And by the end, you'll be able to make some pretty cool stuff on your own. So, some of you may be wondering, what? Minecraft has code? Where do I get this? How do I change it? How do I change a thing? What are Minecraft mods? Or perhaps you're a Forge modder trying to learn about the Fabric API. Here in Mark Oro's modding tutorials, I'll satisfy all of these questions to the best of my ability. We'll be starting in the latest edition of Fabric 1.16.5, which you can download here. Little disclaimer, this tutorial is meant to help you develop your own coding abilities rather than giving a quick and easy method to fix everything. Now before you leave, yes, you certainly can use my videos to make quick fixes to your mods, but at the same time I will include as many bits of coding knowledge and Java language tips as I can while doing so. I'm a firm believer that you can only get better at coding through practice, and not through simply sitting around and reading a textbook and watching tutorial videos. Don't get me wrong, the textbook is a necessary evil, but you will only get better by trying it yourself and working your way through errors, through troubleshooting, and your own research. Firstly, let's walk through the basics of how to get set up making mods. This video will teach you some very basic Java language, albeit no substitute for a formal learning environment. I will teach just enough for, to get you through the mod making process so you can come out of this being knowledgeable enough to make your own mods. We'll start with an IDE, otherwise known as an Integrated Development Environment. An IDE is a software for building applications that combines common developer tools into a single graphical user interface, or GUI. In English, this makes the coding experience much easier in terms of organizing imports, declaring variables, package organization, and a myriad of other tools and features that are crucial for making mods efficiently. Theoretically, you could do all of this using Visual Studio Code, but the only reason you would do that is to take it as a personal challenge. The IDE I will be using is called IntelliJ IDEA. I will be calling it IDEA for short. The geniuses at JetBrains have packed so many features into this, and I personally believe it is far superior to Eclipse for modding. If you cannot get a hold of IDEA, Eclipse will also work just fine. If you'd like to get IDEA, go to the JetBrains website. Navigating to their store, you'll find that IntelliJ is very expensive. But if you are a student, you can go to the, uh, the Special Offers tab. If you are a student or teacher, I have no doubt you'll be able to get your hands on a copy. I used my institutional email and easily got approved for a free copy of one of the most advanced programming softwares I use on the daily. For free? Yeah, it, it, it says that on the screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once installed, you'll have the option to install various plugins to assist in Minecraft modding. The plugins I recommend installing are CMD support and Minecraft development. You may notice I have others installed. These, to my knowledge, do absolutely nothing. Feel free to try them if you are interested. If you already have a project open, to change plugins, all you need to do is go to File, Settings, and then Plugins are right here. You get the same marketplace and installed plugins that you had in the other window. Now that we've got our IDE out of the way, it's time to set up your modding For modding in Java, you're going to need these three things. An IDE, a JDK, and Fabric API. We already have the IDE, but you're also going to need the Java Runtime Environment and the Java Development Kit, JDE and JDK, respectively. You can download and install JDK 8 from the Oracle website. Be sure to install the JDK 8 that is compatible with your operating system. JDK will install both the Runtime Environment and Development Kit for you, so you only need this one download. In order to download JDK, you are going to need an Oracle account. It doesn't cost any money. I just created one using my personal email, which I will blur out. After that, they let you download it. Once you run the file, it will install JDK on your computer. But you're not quite done yet. Now you are going to need to route the system paths to the Java development kit. Disclaimer, it is very likely that IDEA does this automatically, so you can skip this step if you like. Go ahead and skip ahead to the number on the screen but do so with caution as this may not work without this step on some systems. In a Windows operating system, open Edit the System Environment Variables. Go ahead and click on Environment Variables, and here is where you go to Windows Explorer. You're going to want to find the recent installation of Java. Navigate to your previously installed instance of JDK. 
it should be in Program Files, Java, and any of the JDK 8 instances will work. Be sure to click on JDK rather than JRE in case you've installed both. This is redundant, but it will not mess up your system. Once you've found this file, you're going to copy the address. You can use Control C for short, or right click and press copy. We're going to set the Java home and Java path system variables. If you see these here already, just make sure they match the directory you just copied by using the edit function. Here we have Java home and Java path. In mine, it is program files, Java JDK 1.8. Upon clicking edit, you can change this. Now, if I were to paste this, it would have no change because I have already set it. The one difference between home and path is that path includes one extra folder. In this folder, what it looks like is JDK 1.8 and then bin. What this will look for is the Java and other files in here that it needs to use. Java home is the address you just copied and Java path is that with a slash added with bin. If they are not already here, you want to click New, and then type in Java, in all caps, J-A-V-A -A underscore home. Then you will paste the address you've just copied and press OK. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do that. With path, it's the same process. You do Java, path, copy your address, and then do a backward slash bin. You're not quite done yet. You will also need to edit the path system variable as well. For this one, you want to click edit, add new, paste your address, and then do slash bin. Click OK, and you can click OK here as well. Now you are ready for the fabric. Keep in mind, this idea setup will work with both fabric and forge. Eventually, I will create tutorials for both of these. Please leave a comment down below with questions, and I'll make a video about it. And that's it for setting up IntelliJ IDEA and setting the stage for Minecraft mod development. Please stay tuned for the next video where we will set up the Fabric Modding Workspace for 1.16.5. This has been Mark Ora. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Adios, and I'll see you next time.